Oh, it says yo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I invited you to a party, and now yeah, yeah, just accept it. What I want you to do is um, first, first of all, um, I hope you if if you didn't play games on America, we can we'll figure this out. But if you did, great. What I want you to do is I want you to go to the top middle, and I I want you to hit replays. And yeah. then is the replay that you want to go over inside this list now? Yeah, just one second. Well, there's there's a folder that I made. Sure. That has those replay the the replay that I want to go over. Yes. And the, do you see it right now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. And then just grab like uh, as soon as you get it, you can click it and then say watch with others. Yo, stream. What's up? Sorry, guys. I'm doing a coaching lesson. This was... Uh... So, hang on. So, I'm trying to figure out. Um, so, my question is that I have two replays, which is literally the last two games that I played. Sure. Right? And one of them, I lost. So, I was trying to basically find a game where I would lose. Obviously, I'd say this would be probably more beneficial, right? But I just would not lose like seven games in a row. And then, finally, I did. But then, you know, there was... I definitely need help in that game where I lost. But there was... It's a bit tough to like tell because I had some mistakes made where where I usually don't do just because the guy was really aggressive and that's my biggest problem like when things you know trying to pull me apart and then a game right before that I won the game and it was a little bit more standard to how I play which is like, the, like I don't really know which one is the one that I lost but I made mistakes or the one that I played a little bit more care like more you know better but I won, so I don't know which one is you think is, or it doesn't doesn't matter. Uh, winning and losing, honestly, winning and losing, they both would be fine uh, in terms of actually getting a lot of information about it, how to help you. Uh, they'll they'll both be full of stuff we can talk about. So really, I would just say okay. wh whichever one you think best represents. Oh okay, yeah, then the one that I won it was versus Protoss, and I think that's the ones that I mostly lose. So okay, that'd be yes. All, All right. right, so I've selected it, and I just click uh, watch with others. Yep. Not Perfect. And then now, before you start this game, in the lobby, right-click my name and then make me the lobby host. All right, perfect. Okay. We're ready, dude. We're ready. It's happening. Rock and roll. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, so this is for just the intro, I guess, what we're doing. What's up, guys? Welcome to a coaching lesson. And uh, this is... Uh, gonna be me and mr russian vodka over here <laughs> with uh uh terror versus protoss and you're just to get this right you're currently in diamond league correct yeah um hey everybody um uh yeah basically the thing is that i got this new i'm not really i don't feel like i'm a diamond league player i, I definitely feel like i'm a lower leagues but more towards <laughs> platinum i sure. think i just got a lucky pl i got a lucky placement okay towards the, the diamond three and uh I don't think I don't feel like I belong here. I think I'm more towards the plot. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is M3. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be looking at just like oh your you know the way everything kind of flows for you and uh, just to clarify or uh, just so I'm not mistaken here uh, for like memory of our history together were you the guy that I made builds for for like Mech yeah build? Okay. yeah I did so this is the thing. Uh, you did send me a few builds that I, but I just kind of going over how I play just because I'm not high league yet. I, I sort of decided the builds, I decided not to focus on builds to be honest. So I decided sure. to just kind of like, let me, let me more like understand the flow of the game and just be more of like not missing, like building the production and the build and the workers and the that. And then maybe just kind of like more focus on the build itself, because I feel like if I, mess one thing up in the build then the whole game goes you know falls apart because i don't know how to like recover from it and just do normal like you know building bases and keeping up the economy and stuff yeah i i to answer yeah. that i just i didn't i don't have a build i don't really have builds for anything sure. i just kind of sure i i don't mind that at all uh i think that's a totally fine answer i actually uh I think fo focusing on builds as well is kind of a misconception that is people think that's required, but really just like learning how to be efficient with what you do is and you know play properly is is totally valid. So I guess we'll just kind of jump into it. Um, so so far, uh, we you know we're not really able to see too much. We'll start getting this game kind of like you know getting getting it going here. Um, 
the idea against Protoss, though, uh, in general, is def for Terran, is definitely going to be something along the lines of, like, as long as you can control the early gateway unit in a way where it doesn't screw you over, uh, which will require some type of a scout, and we're, now we're doing that, uh, that'll yeah. definitely help a lot, because, the, like, the thing about Protoss is they can definitely screw you over right away and make you have yeah. a lot of wasted time. So, yeah. well, really, I can't say too much, but we'll be seeing in a second here. This year. is like basically a good, good example of saying I have, I have, I feel like I got to this point. Yeah. Just by simply focusing on like not on my like what's that called Ma macro 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 yeah. Macro is what I've been sort of focusing. I think that's the only reason I got to this league. Just but. Now I feel like in Diamond, now you kind of start have to do like a bit of multitasking, like a yeah. bit of harassment. That's where I start having problems. So I've been focusing on builds and, and, and macro for so the whole time. And now I actually have to do something with the army and, and harass and this and that. And that's where my thing start falling apart now. So I'm not really used to multitasking, I guess. Sure. That's my big problem. And so far we can talk about one thing already that could totally be fixed uh it's it is a pretty large deal um the it's but it's really simple it's easy fix T you, what you want to do is you want to time your scv production with your barracks completion and if you have an scv that is we're talking like maybe like seven seconds so it's more than half of the way done or it's basically you know it just finishes the barracks finished you need to start an orbital command the second the barracks is done because this orbital command is is one of the most important things because that first meal will give you such a big economy boost yeah i agree i always do i think it's just because this game specifically the probe was like i said you know i, I got pretty good like at the beginning again but when something comes in like this probe it messes with me i'm like i'm forgetting to do simple things as as such, such as you just yeah, said J, thank you for the sub uh, getting to build the uh no i i feel you it's uh yeah it did Definitely, it uh, can distract you. I, I you know, I, I get you. Um, the biggest thing to know is just to like have uh, have in your mind like a simple answer to everything. That it it won't like just knowing a simple answer to everything won't make things just super distracting. And one of the easiest ways to answer what this guy just did is uh, if you want to make it really basic and always 100% work. If a probe ever attacks your SCV, building a, like a barracks, for instance, you can just send two SCVs off your mineral line like to go attack the the probe that's attacking your SCV and then what you do is the second your uh, your SCV uh, like your two SCVs that you send over there get to the probe make the one who's currently building the barracks make him halt and go back to the mineral line and grab one of your new two ones you just sent over there and go back to the barracks what's a, what's a, what's a halt so halt is if you select an SCV that's currently on a building like we'll go back to when it's doing it it's like when you press the T button. Yeah. So if you click on the SV right now uh, on your barracks, you can see in bottom right there's a halt command, and it will make it. Yeah. It'll make it literally stop building. And then you can. Is, that, is it going to move? Is it going to move, or is it just going to stop it? It's where gonna, it is? It's going to make the SV pop out of the barracks wherever. Like come out. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. going to pop out, so it'll like it'll walk out of the barracks and stand on the side of the building where it is. And then you can send it back to minerals, and then you can grab one of your two new ones that haven't taken any damage yet and have them continue building. Yeah. And that's usually all it takes is just one time of this, and then suddenly you are able to finish the barracks, and this process is done with. It's like dealt with because now you have a you'll be able to make a reaper, that can just kill the probe. Right, but if you what if you you can like click it back into the building so it hopefully like dive into it and come out on the other side of the probe and the or if, some light. If no? you if you tell the SCV to halt and then re retell the SCV go build it again. It you can but do that as well. What would you, what, it's what two SCVs, better? two SCVs pulling. Because if you if the thing is with the halt and you just keep spamming halt, 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 there's no yeah. guarantee you're always going to dodge the probe, right. and right. you might end uh, up building in the exact same spot because it's, it's it's okay RNG. And yeah, I was definitely doing one SCV before. Yeah, so just just send two, and then suddenly you know you, you send out the one who's okay. weak, and you're that's, good to go. That's easy. Yeah, that's easy. So so far the halt thing, and then also the orbital command. Uh, starting that the second your barracks is done is. Two great things to fix up your gameplay a bit. Uh, now we're going to talk about, like, in, behind this, it looks like your build is going to be something like one racks command center expand. Uh, so your build so far is fine, other than the late orbital. And now we're going to be scouting what he's doing to kind of get a read on what's happening in this game. So our SCV that's at his base, it's at his natural. We don't see anything yet. 
And now we're going to go yeah. up this ramp, which is totally fine. And we see nothing again. Okay. So. Hang on a second. I, I have to I have to do the fog fog of war so I only see myself. Sure. That would be more helpful. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, okay. I'm just looking. Um, I'm starting to be better at reading, um, I guess, versus Protoss. The only yeah, thing why, I'm, yeah. um, they give I the know sub, what dude. to do is just to look Welcome for back. number of pylons. Yeah. And gas. And if there's... Like, I don't know, two two gateways before they expand. So I'm basically looking for expansion and... Uh, also, and, uh, Adrenal Life, thank you for the uh, 28 months familiar, dude. Love you. If it's, you know, if there's only one. I guess it, it, there should be one at this point, right? There should should not be two. Yeah, so you can always re match your opponent's build to your build. So, because yeah. the thing about Protoss and Terran is buildings cost, like, the same, essentially. So, you've made a... Uh, so far, you've made a depot and a barracks. And then you have almost 400 minerals saved up uh, in the bank. If the Protoss is doing the same thing as you, he should have like one gate and a pylon, and then about the same, about the same amount of resources saved up. So what we should see, when you throw down your natural, we should be if the Protoss does not have like two gates or something like that, we should be seeing okay. Well, the Protoss is probably also going to expand. So you can go back and confirm that with this ACV in just a second. Yeah. That's why I'm not building natural yet, because I want to see what he has first. Okay, but here here's the thing. This this is also the thing. So if your SCV was a little bit more uh, prompt at running into his main base, because watch, check this out. Now, now we'll talk about this. This is important. Watch how your SCV stops for a little bit in the natural. Yeah. And then if this happens, if this is something that happens to you frequently, just sh what you can do is you can scout his natural and you can shift command. Uh, like move, like how are you doing right now? You can just do that while you're moving across the map yeah, so that yeah. you don't waste time like this. Um, but you should, you should always start your build kind of like Stick to the plan a little bit. I would say the only thing you should do that's different is, um, okay, so this is perfect. So we scouted, you know, like, okay, we don't really know what Protoss is doing yet. Um, we're unsure. He hasn't built any buildings at his base yet. A great way to fix this, but also keep your build flowing normally, is you can, instead of taking the command center on the low ground, you can take it on the high ground. And what this does is, is if this guy is proxy gating you or something like that, you still have the ability to like make a bunker, make units for it, yeah. wall, wall your base, but you still get the natural. But if this guy would have showed you all of his buildings and you like, you have no questions and you know exactly what's going on, taking the command center on the low ground is totally fine. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Okay. So do you think, I just wonder how much, how much, how how bad it is like how Command much center upgrade oh, well, uh, complete so loud. how much course. behind sort of this yeah, puts me Thank you, for the sub. you know the time of lifting it and floating it there and... oh it's it's fine uh Lifting your command center isn't that bad. Uh, if, if you're doing it for safety purposes, it's and you're like not sure what this guy's doing with his build, obviously now you know. Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth yeah, it. it's, it's, it's worth it because you, okay. you guarantee that you don't have to get harassed by anything. And the worst thing ever would be if you don't know you're going to get harassed by something and suddenly you have to cancel the command center because yeah. it's going to get killed. Okay. So now that you confirm that he has a gate and a core, I, yeah, I was going to say, now you need to know. So I went back it. down and, and now I'm feeling safe. Yeah. There's only one gate and... and Perfect. This this to me is normal. Yeah, no, it's right? definitely normal. normal definitely normal, yeah. Because now you also saw the expansion and seeing that expansion, it tells you everything. It tells you exactly what's going on and he's not going to be uh, like all inning you basically. Yeah. All right. And now behind this, making a choice. We have uh, your second factory and your second gas are going up similar timed. I would say this is um, this is not bad. What you should do is you should definitely start them together. But it's close. I would say this one is close enough. It's it's fine. You have the right idea, and you're, it looks like you're going to be going into cyclones because you're making a tech lab off of the back yeah. of the barracks. So you're going to be swapping it over, and it's great. The, the build is going to flow. Uh, your depot is almost done as well. Um. Yeah. Uh, so far. Uh, hang on. You're, you're saying that uh, you would you would recommend to start gas a little later. No. 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 Uh. So it's the second you start the factory, you yeah. you should start your second gas at the same time. Yeah. I I didn't this time. Uh. It's there's a discrepancy of about uh eight seconds. Okay. And again, like it's okay. it's close enough that I'm not going to be like this is the this is a major problem, but ideally you want it to be tied. Would I have to do this if I if Yo, I'm lucky? Thank you for the sub. Dirt. Much love. So if I want to open up aliens, do I also have to start the second gas with 
yeah the, yeah uh, factory. yeah uh okay. I'll, always ideally first first gas always goes to the barracks so it times out a reaper really well and second gas always goes to the factory so you time out your following tech really well Ooh, you got it all right and then uh now the reaper's going to his base and you know this is uh oh oh okay <laughs> last yeah, uh, yeah. purple yeah. uh so that's sort of i don't know why but for some maybe maybe i'm wrong but for some reason that makes me kind of happy I, I don't think like in, in like a in like a bad way but i don't think like a sort of like a good player would do this right sure. or did he make like a mistake like you i don't know they tell me the probes attacking you yeah oh it's it happens uh people just like hate being harassed and they overcompensate for it so they're like maybe we'll get us around and if they don't then they don't but we'll, yeah, let's no, talk about. I can't, I can't harass the probes just yet. Like, like I said, I can't. Uh, I feel like I'll, I'll miss something, and then I'll just hurt myself more. That, that Sh going too probe. Okay. You know what? I'm, I'm okay with that. That's the what you, I was gonna tell you something, but said, the what you just said is totally fine. It makes sense. Uh, you don't have to harass the probes if you're not really sure, because most Protosses, anyways, would have uh, like a stalker popping out right, like within oh, a couple seconds. Course, yeah. So it would your depth could totally die. So if you just want to use it to scout, that's fine. I do yeah, like. But the, yeah. I, don't I was, was going to say I do like that you, you've scouted the pylon placement as well, uh, and the reason why is because whenever you scout the pylon, uh, and now you're scouting again, I love it. So scouting. Yeah, because I thought yeah, like like this is like this is one thing I was going to start, man. I interrupted you. Like the, the sort of the 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 second pylon is is when when I see it. Like if I don't see the second pylon, does, does this mean that he has something on the map happening, right? Yeah, but at the same yeah. time, I can, like you said, I can compare it to my build and see that he might not even have money to do it, right? So well, if uh, just knowing that, like a pylon and a depot, they cost the same amount and they give the same amount of supply. Uh, the fact that you have two depots and you're at twenty-five out of thirty-one, you should know that the Protoss is also in the same boat you are. If he didn't have two pylons, he would be supply block right now. So you 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 know a hundred percent at this point. Once you once you start your second depot. You know he's already made a second pylon. It's just mm -hmm. it's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. But now that you saw the second pylon, it doesn't mean that there might not be a third pylon. If there was, there would definitely be some discrepancies with his economy management. He would be yeah. maybe like cutting things here and there, like not producing out of the gateway, or maybe cutting a probe here and there. But um, I love that you're repeating scouts on this pylon, on both pylons, because you're gonna see, you should see his tech really soon. So the fact that you haven't seen his tech yet, and the fact that you see such a quick second pylon. It should give you this feeling that this dude is actually just delaying his tech really hard, and he's just focusing on, like, I'm going to make probes, most likely, and there's nothing too scary that you need to worry about. Yeah. Um, now your follow-up is... I love it. I love that you're getting missile upgrade right away. That is very, very important. I love that you're, that you're getting a uh, cyclone really quick. And, uh, yeah, just really... it's. Uh, it, I will say... Oh, let's look at your barracks. Or, no, sorry, your command center. I will say the big one, though, is we want to make sure... This is bigger than anything, okay? So this is the most important thing. We want to make sure you're just continuously making SCVs. And up to this point, you've done a mostly good job. But now you have, you've had about for the last, like, ever since, like, 304, you have not been making a worker. We'll see how long this goes. But things like this are definitely huge. Uh, always, always, always be in the habit of... Like every time, this is what yeah. This is a great. Yeah, wow. This has been for a while. Yeah, this this is gonna be a great tip that'll help you out, and it's gonna be eye management. If you select both your command centers right now, uh, like you could do it right now in the replay. You just click one and shift click the other to add yeah, it in. Yeah, to see that there's no white dots. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. You, what I want you to do from now on, if you don't already do it, is just train your eyes to look at that while you're moving your reaper around the base, and you can yeah, be looking I at his base. Don't. Yeah. I don't. You could be looking at his base and then just check the dots and make sure. Is it producing? And if not, you, you need to, like, now that you're checking that, you need to always be producing that. And it'll show you all command centers, too. So definitely uh, something that'll help you out. But this this is the killer of everybody who is, like, getting stuck in StarCraft in some point in time, is they just always get sidetracked, and they go, oh, damn, I'm not making workers. So this has been a, like, there's already been, like, a guaranteed, like, one, now two SCVs have been missed. Okay. It's, it's about the amount of time for two SCVs to have been built. So you could have been at 26 workers right now, just like the Protoss is. Wow, I had no idea. Command center upgrade complete. And then, uh, 
We have uh, no, a. I'm just gonna pause you for a second. This, sure. this sound is funny. How do I? Just turn it, down if you wanna. The sound of, like, just uh, talking. Just type. Oh, con and... Just hit Control S, and you can get rid of the sound effects altogether if you don't want to hear it for the replay. And then you can hit it okay. again if you want to toggle it back on. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, so now you got the cyclone. I like that you're not really moving out and rushing with the first one. Uh oh. <laughs> Sounds still going. Uh, if if it, control S isn't working, you can also just hit F. No, 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 it was good. Oh, it was good? I'm, I'm toggling, just toggling it. Okay, okay. Um, oh, you hear it, you hear it. That's I hear it, yeah. No, it's, it's, I don't mind hearing it, if you don't mind. No, no, okay, I'll, I'll kill it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I like, okay, we're, we're going to talk about a couple things here. I like your third command center. Amazing. Perfect. That's what you need to be doing. I love your second factory and a second tech lab. This is definitely a cyclone heavy opener and you're definitely uh, getting yourself ready for the longer game. Uh, your reaper is, this is acceptable what happened. Like it's, it's normal. Let's, uh, let's actually like, let's see if you could, you could have yeah, this any better. I should have just gone to see his third base instead. Yeah. That's, that's... But he wouldn't, he wouldn't have it this early. So if you think about this too, though. So you're, if you were, let's just say you're, uh, you're, you know, you're, you're getting the Reaper into his base. It's, oh, it was, I would say it would be more worth it if instead of seeing the adept and going, I'm going to charge through him, just running around and, and like you said, coming from the third base, but you don't have to stay at the third. You can jump up the cliff away from where the adept and the Reaper are, or sorry, where the adept and stalker are. So you can get like a guaranteed reveal into his main. Um, however, if the Reaper dies like it did, where you didn't really get to scout anything, but you did just see another building. The perfect yeah. the perfect place to scan his base would be honestly on that. Do you see that circle on the bottom left of his nexus? Where it's like yeah, yeah it's, it's like a yeah. yeah. So you, you scan like right there, and it, you would it would be wide enough to see not only what you just that building you just saw, whatever it oh, might be. Oh, possible tech on top. Of the exactly. Top, yeah. yeah. So you could see you could so, see if there's tech on either side. Would you would you prefer? To, uh, to scan it where you said to see the tech or to scan it a little bit lower to see possible tech and and possible third, which one's more important? Uh, to detect his third base or to, de to detect his tech? So with Protoss, Protoss uh, is probably not going to take, usually Protoss will take, not take a third as fast as Terran will, um, just because Terran can do what you're doing right now, which is safety third, and then lift it off later. If, right. if this dude goes for a third that greedy, uh, like, and especially if you're going Cyclones, you can just crush the shit out of that. Um, I would say scouting, uh, scanning for the uh, the tech, like going to that circle in the main. Because you can always poke him with Cyclones at his third. Like, ideally, your Reaper would have caught the third, too. Uh, so that was, I would say that was also not a great idea with how you sent the Reaper in. Setting it around is, from the third would be better. Is there a rule of thumb to scan Protoss? If, he, if, if I see he's doing somewhat normal build from my initial scout, is there a rule of thumb? Okay, at five minutes you want to scan to to get a read on the tech. I would say uh, the general rule of thumb should be if you can't figure out what he's doing by the time your reaper dies, that's then you know uh, around what you're at now, but like right around like just after four minutes would be a great time to do this because this dude should 100% have thrown his tech down by now because mm -hmm. a Protoss player is going to have a cyber core uh, done. Around this, around like the cyber core is going to be finishing around the time when you like start the factory, or like you, you know, he, you start factory, he starts cyber core. That's kind of how it goes. But he'll start it a little bit before you do because it doesn't cost a gas for a cyber core. So his tech is going to be thrown down before your factory is done, is what I'm trying to say. Like your first factory. Yeah. So you should definitely be able to have, and if it's not, it, it's just a really awkward delayed build. So you should definitely have some type of a read on what he's doing. Um, by the time you're, you know, one, like once you have a cyclone out, especially he will, he should have already made his choice as to what he's going to go for. And if you would have scanned his base, like where the circle was, we would have seen a twilight council. We're just looking at everyone's vision right now. Um, we can see the Protoss has a twilight council and two gates and then nothing up near the pylon at the top. This is fine. Uh, what this would have told me is it would have told me, okay, well, this guy's got a potential of having some type of aggression coming out of him. He has the, the ability now to go for charge lots, blink stalkers, resonating glaived adepts. So any gateway unit can really be upgraded here. Or he's going to go... What is the... Sorry, man. What, I, I keep... I hear this word. I don't know what this means. What's resonated glaive adept? Is okay, that, so... Is that like an upgrade or something? Yeah, for them? so what resonating glaived adepts are is adepts permanent... <clears throat> they permanently get a 45% attack speed increase. 
Okay. So it just makes adepts. Uh, if he goes mass adepts, they're just going to be attacking way more often. So it's just as bad as like blink stalkers or something not being ready for that. No, yeah, like if, if you aren't prepared for any of these timings, uh, which you should be because you're going double factory reactors uh, with cyclones. But if, if you were not ready for any one of the any, any one of the types of timings that can come out of a Twilight Council, yeah, it would definitely be a problem for you. I would say the decision the Protoss is making right now with a Blink Stalker upgrade is probably the best possible thing he could be doing because it's the best yeah. thing against Cyclones. But I don't, I don't remember ever getting... I don't really play that, that much this game <laughs> enough, I guess, but I've sure. never really had experience to have being attacked with a bunch of deaths at the beginning. Yeah, so it, it's it's less common for Terran to deal with, honestly. I would say you'll if you played Zerg, you'd be dealing with adepts a lot more often. Okay. Um, but anyways, uh, sc like scanning him would have been nice so you could see what he's going for. Either way, though, again, even if you don't scan him, the biggest thing of all is just building your workers. Uh, like, just keeping your build flowing, Good building morning. the workers, all that stuff. Um, and now, right around the time when you have your missile upgrade is almost done, this would be the perfect time to move out. It looks like you're starting to move out, which is great. Now you just want to be careful about how you do move out, though. Um, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> that second game that I was telling you about was Zurich. I learned it the hard way. <laughs> yeah. No, it's... Uh, if. The the this is the one tip I'll give you that's major, uh, in terms of moving out properly. Try not to ever move out in a position where you're running up the ramp where his base is. So it's like, but what I mean by that is, is you don't actually see what's ahead of you until you're committed, and you know he's there. So you like you know where his natural is, but if you go up this ramp where the rocks are in front of you, we'll we'll see if you do. We'll see if you do. But if you if you do go up that ramp, it's definitely going to be a problem. Okay, look. Looks like you're going for the third. This is I guess I'm checking the third in here. Yeah, this is way better. This is ideally what you want to do. Okay, so chances are really low that you're going to run into a, like a, a unit sitting on the top of the ramp at his third base. Where like where his normal third would be. Because if you look at the other ramp, he's got stalkers really close by and he even as the adept moving down the ramp, you would most likely be getting smacked right away uh, going up that ramp by some stuff. It would it would just be less efficient and you definitely don't want to waste uh, HP on your cyclones because cyclones are really good, but they're also really squishy. So you want to make you want to make the most of these units. Um, so I, I like the position you chose because now it gives you a wide open space to work with in front of you where you're going. So you check the third. There is no third, and now pushing forward would be fine uh, with these cyclones. But again, let's look at production, uh, and let's look at SCVs and probes and stuff. So you are producing SCVs right now. This is good. Uh, we have missed a little bit earlier, as we talked about, but so far it's good. You have a third commencement fishing right now. That is nice. Uh, your money is starting to ramp up faster than your gas. And you're also your natural is starting to also get really well saturated. I would say this would be roughly around the perfect time to take your gases at your uh, natural because you're doing a gas-heavy build. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then... Uh, and here, here's before we continue going back on the cyclones here for a second, because we don't want to. I don't want to bypass this. This is important with your build. The one thing about cyclones that is really good is the more cyclones you have, the more lock-ons you get, and then the more lock-ons you get, the more you, power you have at just popping chunks of his army. If you get a nice juicy lock-on situation going on, the negative thing though is if you don't have anything to cover the cyclones which is like hell bats or just hell not really hell bats just really hellions um which is why we're talking about getting the gas right now at your natural it makes sense because your money is more than enough to, to afford this at this point but if you actually are able to throw down a few more factories a little bit faster suddenly you can have like two or three more factories a little bit quicker you could have a situation where it's like two reactors and three tech labs at an early pace so that every time you take a fight you kill a bunch of units with lock-ons, and the Protoss kills some Hellions. The goal is, is you always want him to kill Hellions and not Cyclones. If you're losing Cyclones repeatedly, that is the incorrect way to play this style. That is just like the big golden rule of playing this style. All right, so, Hang on a second. Shit. This is important. Hang on a second. Yeah. So, so, because the biggest problem is that the, the gas... Yeah, the gas... Like this build is there's always never enough gas for this build. Yeah, that's why that's what I'm saying like right now would be perfect to take your gas at your natural. 
Okay, and, and when you say right now is is when you sort of have the first little group of units to move out of the it's, before you take the third before you take the third. It's around the time. So first gas, the very first gas is when you build the barracks. Second gas is when you build the factory. The third and fourth gas should be thrown down right around the time you have like ten SCVs on your natural, okay. and you're still producing SCVs. And if you really think about it, let's look at something actually. You actually are having a really delayed gas because you could actually have 17 SCVs on your natural already because look at your main. It's yeah, oversaturated. So this is what I was going to ask you about this. The reason why this happens is I had I had I, I have this all the time happen. Like I want to know how you deal with this. I have I had both of these uh, CCs rallied to my natural but then I noticed that oh, okay I only have 14 versus 16 so let me put let me click back and then I just kind of forget about it and then they just keep piling up. The, the reason why that happens is because you're building buildings and those SCVs are currently off building something and then they right. come back. Don't uh, don't don't worry yeah. about that. Just let it let it be. Um, I always have that. I think okay, let me go, come back here in 15 seconds and then I forget and then it just pops yeah. up. It's uh this is really only going to happen to your main and your natural. Uh like I would say it's going to only happen to your natural in the sense where you might have a missing SCV because you want to build a supply depot or something like that every once in a while, but it'll mostly happen to your main because most of your tech does go in your main. So it'll repeatedly happen to your main. But as long like the way you took expansions here anyways, if you lifted this third to the third base and then you started sending SCVs to the third once you were fully saturated on your natural, your natural and your third would always have SCVs being built that would always go to the new base and be efficiently mining is my point. Yeah. You'd never have yeah. like this wasted SCV. So having missing SCVs periodically in your main is not a big deal. It's uh, it's standard for time okay. to have this. Uh, and again, yeah, like always, but always be in the habit though. Every time you build a building, to shift, right click the mineral line after you start the building, so it'll always go back immediately to mining. And it won't just stand there when it's done building the building. Yeah, but you can't do that when you're trying to land it, right? Because oh, no, well, when you sand. when you land a building, it has nothing to do with the SCV. It's more or less just building the building itself. So when you when you go say, hey yeah. SCV, build a factory, yeah. shift right click mineral. Yeah, line. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Alright, and then also, talking about what just happened here, this is important too. The thing about Cyclones, like I said before, is it's Cyclones are a very crucial timing unit. So, what you want to do, like right here is perfect. You see, he's got three Stalkers, and he also has a Pylon. Now, if I were to ask you, and I, again, I don't expect you to know this, and I expect to know here, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Do you know how many missiles it takes for a stalker to die from a cyclone right now? I don't know, five? It takes, if it's close, it takes four. Now, the next question is, is do you know how fast it, your cyclone will shoot a missile, you know, in general? How fast they shoot? Um, no. Okay, that's fine. It's, random guess, random guess. Okay. No, I'm saying like it. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> you're gonna say a number. Okay. No, no, random guess. I'm saying it's just like five, ten. Like I really. Okay, so a si it takes four missiles to kill a stalker because it does 40 damage per missile now, and a stalker has uh, 168 points, and it so it, and it does not get affected by armor. So it does it does 100 percent of the damage it says it does, and it shoots one missile every about like 0.8 seconds, or so. It shoots like a little bit faster than a second. So my point is, is what you could do is you could, you could literally a move your cyclones into his three stalkers. And then you could try your best to like micro the situation where you have, uh, um, you have your cyclones, not just getting shot constantly. You have them in that dead zone where he can't shoot you back, but he's also taking damage, but locking on a two of his three stalkers right now would be amazing. You should, that definitely yeah, is your goal. I, I definitely don't. I didn't. Honestly, I didn't even see them. I thought it was just a pylon. So I thought I thought he has stuff on the map. So I thought that let me attack this pylon so he can come back so I can take my third. Hopefully. Sure. Uh, I didn't even see those stalkers so for some reason. I remember I was attacking the pylon there. And the the pylon will it'll like if there are stalkers nearby. The way a pylon works is it, the way to call it or describe it is it is a neutral target, and stalkers are hostile targets. So if yeah, you, if, it will not lock exactly. On. It will it will not auto lock on. You have to physically do it yourself. So yeah. I would say always, even if you see a pylon here and you see, let's just say you see, and you're poking him with the Protoss with some Cyclones, you, you would also be better if there were no units here at all to just go lock onto some probes. 
So killing the pylon, I would say, is uh, yeah. is definitely the wrong call here because if you just kill the pylon and back off, what you're doing is you're giving the Protoss time to re to build up faster than you. And he will build stalkers faster than you can build cyclones. And you're also on a clock right now. And this this is why this is really scary. If you don't cripple his gateway count by the time his blink is done. And right now, if you hit the letter D on the keyboard, you can see production. And you can see that his blink is two-thirds of the way done, basically. It's, it's getting close. 75 yeah. out of 121. So when that thing is done, you are, your whole window of cyclone aggression like this kind of goes away. And then that's when you need, okay, the only way it makes sense now is having hell, Hellions with your Cyclones to absorb damage. So there's a... But I don't... But this is the thing. I don't know that he's doing attack. I don't know if he... I'm not... I don't know if he's doing timing because I didn't see the it's, it, blink. And I'm already at five minutes. At this point, am I... Honestly, I'm not expecting him to attack me. It's totally fine. Like, like I'm not expecting the timing, I'm saying. He could, but not like... Yeah, it's totally fine that you don't know he's going blink. It's always a possibility. But what you do know, is, what you should know... Is that Cyclones capitalize... Like the opener you did where you, where you got the missile upgrade and you went double tech lab Cyclones. You should always be hunting for units as fast as you can. As soon as you have two Cyclones. Because by the time you have two Cyclones, which is a great time to move out, that's the same time your upgrade finishes. And that upgrade makes these Cyclones insanely scary. Because instead of killing a Stalker in eight missiles, it kills a Stalker in four missiles. Which is a massive difference of how long it takes to kill a Stalker. You can, you can basically kill a Stalker now in like 3.2 seconds or so. Instead, if you didn't have, if you did not have the missile upgrade, it would take, um, what, fucking, uh, uh, sorry, I don't know why this is taking me so long to think about this. It would be like 6.4 seconds. I don't know why that was so hard for me to do that math. <laughs> Jesus. Holy crap, guys. We're good. Okay. We're good. Math on stream. <laughs> But yeah, 6.4 seconds yeah, man, versus 3.2. Uh, yeah, cool, man. Uh, that was helpful. I wrote it down. Yeah. That's a good tip. Cool. So it's it's a massive difference. Like, you can, you're can you definitely going to see how fast they die versus how fast they wouldn't otherwise. But now that you're not hitting the stalkers, it's... uh Like, like right there, you're taking a couple, like a pot shot on your cyclone. That, yeah, that kind of... Yeah, it was dumb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, no and then, yeah, then now, well, like I said, I didn't, I didn't, see, I didn't see, I don't know why. Sure. But always hunt for the units anyways. Just don't even think about buildings. Hunt for the units first. That's, yeah. that's the power of this build. The, the, the best way to describe this build is, um, uh, you always want to cripple your opponent when you play this style. And if you don't cripple your opponent, the power of Hellion Cyclone gets really weak, really fast. But if you do actually cripple your opponent, it just, what happens instead is, is this build allows you to expand repeatedly while you keep your opponent really low economy and really low unit count. And you just overpower them over time. So you have to be basically active with this build yes. as soon as you have starting from two and up. Yes, like ideally. You know, for the first two especially, it sets the pace of a lot of things. Uh, because those first two Cyclones right now with the way he opened where he just made a couple Stalkers. Like he made three Stalkers, that was it. Those, what would have really happened if you would have committed to this properly is your first two Cyclones could have locked on to two Stalkers and out of the three and popped uh, two out of his first three Stalkers. Guaranteed. And then if he runs away trying to save them, you could still kill them. Guaranteed. Because if he runs up the ramp, you can scan. If he runs away just on the low ground, you can just chase and they will die. The third Stalker will die no problem. The two Cyclones as well. And then now suddenly you're in here, this mineral line just killing probes, 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 and he's losing probes. And he only has two gateways at the moment, at this moment in time. If he keeps making stalkers and you, let's say your cyclones are still not dead, you can lock on to two warping in stalkers and kill them. And he doesn't even have a pile near the nexus, so he has no way to warp in. So there's a guarantee you could have killed a lot of probes here too. And even if those cyclones die, I bet you could have had a trade where you killed uh, three stalkers and you killed maybe like six or seven probes. That's a very realistic trade if you like push him to the end where you just get get killed by his next round because he warps in somewhere else. And then that happens. But like there's a lot of missed damage opportunity here is what I'm saying. Like because we've so far we've done none. And uh, yeah. you could have definitely done a lot because stalkers are the thing about stalkers is is they're really shitty against cyclones when you have the missile upgrade. Stalkers desperately need blink to be able to combat that. And he doesn't even have blink for the next still for the next like thirty seconds or so. So this is this is the, your window that of damage opportunity is going away 
when it's you should be the one doing the damage right now. Yeah. Cool, man. I'll know that for the next time for sure. Sure. I had no idea. Yeah. That was very helpful. Yeah, it's it's this style is all about the setup. Like how much you kick your opponent to the ground basically in the early stages of the game really dictates how well the game will go from you for you from that point. Uh and again we you know we have your uh we see your main as you've rotated some SVs off, that's nice. They go they went to your third or your natural even. But your natural right now has the same problem again we talked about earlier where it's just a lack of gas. You actually do have the gases, but it's it's a bit late. We we talked about the timing, but now that you have them, there's still only only one SV mining them. Uh, I would say, as a general rule of thumb, if you... Oh, just fix it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a general rule of thumb, if if for whatever reason, let's just say you take a gas and you know you need it, but your gases aren't fully saturated yet, and uh, you're, you're still making SCVs, and you have a moment to spare in your base, okay? This is like between micro rounds of your cyclones. You can actually right-click scvs on a building gas early yeah, yeah. Okay. and then you can just forget about it and then just while you're making scvs while you're at his base those will keep saturating the mineral line so you'll still replenish yeah. the mineral line the whole time but right now you're having a big discrepancy of minerals to gas uh and that's just because of the lack of gas that's the only reason why this is happening another thing too is if you ever if you're ever in a situation where you're like okay i can't really make a lot of factories right now and i have a lot of minerals i have a thousand plus and I'm kind of waiting on my gas to ramp up. You can totally just make another command center too. That's totally fine. Um, throwing down like a command center, like one at a time, is is actually a great way to play Hellion Cyclone styles because you're gonna you can slowly like have like your first three become orbital commands, and from that point on you can be like fourth base planetary, fifth base planetary, sixth base planetary, and it just gives you like protection around your base and stuff like that. I just never really feel, I guess, the reason why I, I don't do it. Oh, yeah, that was bad. I don't do it. I don't, I don't put them like one after another because I just never feel like I don't have enough money. I feel like there's always enough money for this build, but not never enough gas. Yeah, and the, the gas will be fixed if you do the gas timing like we talked about earlier. And yeah, then the, yeah. the same thing can be said about your third base. You can take gas at your third base when you have roughly about like 10 SUVs on your third base. And then. You know, you keep making SVs, you saturate it as it go, as it goes, and there you go. But here's a, here's a, an interesting thing that again, this is something that would um not be happening. Had had you done aggression early game, and you popped some stalkers with your first cyclones when you when you were the one who had the advantage before he had blink. This stalker count would not be this big. Instead, it would be like you would be the one with like still like five cyclones, and he would be the one with maybe like three stalkers, because you keep crippling him over and over and over before he has blink and then when he does get blink then you do need to respect him a bit more and this now would be the time when you go okay well Protoss has blink I'm going to back off and I'm going to make I'm going to I'm not really going to engage again until I have Hellions with my army as well you do not want to be engaging with pure cyclone versus blink stalker why would I want to have Hellions with it yeah you want to have that's why I'm saying you want to have the gas earlier so you can make more factories to also add in some reactor to Hellion uh, production and the reason why is because when you attack his army, if this, let's just say this, okay? Let's say he has eight stalkers and you have eight cyclones and like six hellions. If he blinks into your army, all of your cyclones will auto lock on to their own stalker. And if we're talking each stalker dies in 3.2 seconds, all of his stalkers are going to die pretty fucking fast. But if you also have hellions in your army and his stalkers are starting to kill hellions because they're closer to the stalkers... Every time he kills a Hellion, you don't care at all. Like, that's a great trade for you because Hellions are very replaceable. You can make two at a time, and they're just minerals. They don't cost any gas. So it's you. you what you want is you, you basically want Hellions as, like, decoys. You want them to just absorb damage so Cyclones last longer. Yeah, well, I feel like that's if they blink in, but I feel like the biggest problem to me with that is... is how, how I play Cyclones, I just, you know, it's like in and out, in and out, just trying to like keep this as much distance as possible and when i'm trying to come in closer to lock on as many cyclones i have all these hellions like like hellion I'm over like i'm trying i'm move over i'm trying to have as many of them to to lock on so i can like kite i guess again a, a hellion yeah. will is also faster than a cyclone so it'll all it will always be in the front which is what you want but a hellion l losing a few hellions to get lock-ons is what you're supposed to do 
Uh huh. Okay. So that way you can you can be like, okay, I have uh, you know, I have I ten, I I have down. ten cyclones and ten hellions, and I went for a lock on round, and I got eight out of my ten cyclones got lock ons, and I lost um four out of my eight hellions to do that or something like that. You know, it's that's totally fine because you're gonna get a nice juicy connection where you're gonna kill a lot of units with lock on at the cost of hellions. But Hellions, that's all they're supposed to be, is damage sponges that keep your Cyclones alive the whole time. Because Cyclones have a much longer build time than Hellions. Uh, you can make, for every two Cyclones you make, you can make six Hellions, essentially. Out of one factory producing the units. So you have a lot, like, cause if you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a massive difference of just how much shit you can have. And then also, again, Hellions, you, don't, you do not care at all about Hellions damage. The only thing Hellions are actually going to kill, like actually going to help kill in this kind of a situation, is if this guy had a lot of charge lots. Exactly. Yeah. And obviously he doesn't have Zealots, so all they are then is damage absorbers. Yeah. Oh, cool. I did not also. Yeah, no, it's it's very, very important. Because now you're, you're just in the situation where you're you're getting bullied by Blink Stalkers. With, and the reason why it's happening is because you didn't capitalize on damage early on. And uh, now, yeah, I also, I also ran up to the to the ramp with all my stuff. Yeah, exactly. I hit me and I got killed. Yeah, you, you, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, you had five cyclones. Now you only have one. And uh, even even the thing is, is even if you didn't run up that ramp and you fought him in the open ground airspace, like just the ground area, he had blink at that point in time. And it, once the Protoss has blink, if you only have pure cyclone, you should lose anyways. Especially if the stalker count is bigger than the cyclone count. Because all he has to do is if you lock onto his stalker, he blinks backwards. It cancels your lock on, and cyclones only really do damage with lock on. So blink is very scary if the, you let the stalker count get way higher than your cyclone. And again, the reason why that's happening is because you didn't capitalize early game. Yeah. Like, look at that. You killed, you killed three stalkers there so fast with cyclones. Which is why if you can just if you if you kind of like cripple the stalker count a little bit early game, keep him like a little more innocent with his uh, count of his units by being a little more aggressive when he doesn't have any upgrades, and um, and if you see oh he's making stalkers making stalkers that's wonderful for you. Um, by this point in time, if if you, let's say now he's blinking around the map with ten stalkers at a time, and you have ten cyclones at a time. That's when you should feel really confident if you have a hellions mixed in with it, because if he's like I'm gonna do an aggressive blink into your face. All your cyclones just lock onto all his stalkers, and at best, he, if he focus fires, he might kill two of your cyclones, and you pop the remainder of that, which is if he, if he has 10 stalker, you have 10 cyclone, he kills two cyclone, but in the time it takes him to kill two cyclone, you pop eight stalkers, and now it's eight cyclones versus two stalkers. So basically, if I do have healings, I actually want them to blink into me. Yes. Because you want or him, just, yes, yeah, you do. Cool. Because you the, again, the Hellions are just going to be like, you're wasting time shooting me instead. And then again, like again, it's it does not take very long for a cyclone to kill units. It it only takes th about three seconds and shit dies. So that's and then if you look at a, a stalker's attack speed, three seconds is roughly two two three attacks. It's like one each attack is one point three. So. Three attacks is 3.9, and if it only takes 3.2 for a cyclone to kill a stalker, a stalker will not get a third hit off if they both shoot at the exact same time. It'll die before that. It's just, it's a fragile army. It, like, Have you ever heard of the term glass cannon? Yeah, yeah. so that's what I feel of with those, those cyclones. Yeah, that's if what they are. Like one second, you don't look at them, just so all gets. Yeah, that's why you want to you wanna give them some support. Like right there, how he just blinked forward. If you had some, if you had Hellions, like now you're starting to use Hellions too, which is great. I'm loving that you're you're starting to have them. Um, but like when he blinks forward like this, and he kills one Cyclone, you can kill as many Cyclones as you have in that form of Stalkers. So he blinks forward, kills a Cyclone. Let's say you have five more, and he loses five to kill one. Like tr trades like this are going to be great for you if you have the right, you know, amount of stuff. And they, look at that. He, look at all his shit he's losing now. This is an awful trade for him. So that was that was great for you to have chased that, uh, and suddenly you just kind of like balanced it out again because he overcommitted there. This is this is a good question. Uh, you see how I I have these what do you call those not hellions but these things hell that turn into the hell bats, Yeah. So I don't know why I did that. This is this is a good. Question. I have no idea when I should do hell bats and when I should do hellions. I know that they have a little bit more HP. I think that's why I did it so they can survive a little while. Do not ever make hell bats. When you have an army that is Hellion Cyclone. Okay. 
That was easy. <laughs> yeah. The, there's there's only one exception, and that one and exception. Yeah, like like if you if you switch your composition, you can start using Hellbats. Like with again with Thor, perfect, because Thor is way slower. It's not about kiting; it's about power in a concave. That's that's totally fine. Yeah, they move the same speed, so kind of. But the only time you should ever use Hellbats with Cyclones is if you are being all in and you have no choice but to, like to defend your natural or something uh -huh. like that, and you're like, well, I'm, I can't kite you now because I'm like stuck in my base, and it's really just. These Hellbats are going to hopefully like kill Zealots or whatever, or Zerglings or whatever race you're playing against. And you, 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 you know, like kiting isn't really much of an option for you because he's busting your SCVs and right, trying to right. kill you there. But if you're anywhere, on, if you're ever attacking him or you're ever in the middle of the map anywhere, never use Hellbats when it's Hellion Cyclone. Always Hellion because they move as fast, if not a little bit faster than, than help, than uh, yeah, the Hellion yeah. moves a little faster. So it always will be in the front. So it always will be the thing that initially gets hit for you, which is what you want to be happening. But yeah, I could see your I could see your point when you were like, the help the the hellions just get stuck, and if you ever have hellbats when you're trying to kite people, yeah, it doesn't work. Properly. Exactly, you know what I mean? Like I'm trying to have as many lock-ons, like these things. Are just, this is um this is my biggest problem with, I can never find like a good, especially when I get a lot of cyclones. Yeah. I can never find like a good concave to lock. Like it always, they always kind of stretch, like especially versus zerg. Like it only like like the front peak only like attacks, and then. I have to kite back, Ray. Like I can never have a lot of them lock on, so I can start kiting back. It was always like this, like first two, three, and then they get destroyed a lot of the time. So it's yeah. like the trades are kind of questionable. A, a lot of it just again, it comes down to uh, how much you keep crippling your opponent. That's really that's that is the most the the thing where it's like seeing the difference between a good and a bad person who's using Hellion Cyclone is it's all about efficiency of how many timings they hit. And the timings, of the, like understanding what's going on is, we kind of already touched on it, which was, you know, really pressuring him hard with pure Cyclone before he has Blink, but then when he has Blink, pressuring him with Hellion and Cyclone together. And every time mm -hmm. he blinks forward, it's just like, one or two Hellions might die if he does, unless he might focus fire a Cyclone, but he's getting punished by tons yeah. of Stalkers getting locked on and dying as well. And it's worth the the money that aliens cost 100 percent it is like money is not your limiting factor it's gas and gas is what yeah, cyclones cost yeah. you'll always have more minerals than you can spend so hell Hel having hellions die repeatedly is ideal for you because it's saving your gas because if if if, if like every fight you win this is how just, just it works it only takes like a couple fights and the game could literally end if the first fight happens and you have eight cyclones your opponent has 10 stalkers and you have six hellions if he blinks in and kills two or three hellions and you kill eight of his ten stalkers because you have eight cyclones and he blinks away with the last couple stalkers and he's like shit okay that was bad that already is kind of like going to set the pace of the game really hard because now from now on you're always going to have a higher cyclone count than he has in stalkers as long as you keep making cyclones and you don't stop macroing and suddenly now the next fight if he blinks at you or some shit and you have 14 cyclones and he only has 12 stalkers every single stalker dies and then again if that happens another time now the next fight is you might have 18 cyclones and he once again only has like 10 or 12 stalkers and it just even if you start losing cyclones at this point you can still keep popping uh all of his all of his uh units every time you see them and it just yeah. it cripples him to the point to where now once you have a situation like that like win one or two big fights like this and now you can just kill expansions. Be like, well, there's nothing stopping me now from just killing your third base and killing all your probes and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just pushing and killing him. So things are piling up in the it sort of... It totally does. Yeah. And I love your, uh, you know, your your macro overall is definitely not bad. It's definitely, I would say, your strong suit. Uh, like, I would say your gas timings is your, and maybe missing a few SCVs here and there. Those are your biggest weaknesses um, for macro. But overall, your macro is definitely your strong point. Uh, the The biggest weakness I'm seeing overall with what, what you're actually doing is your uh, is your usage of your army, for, for sure. Yeah. At this point... Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what, this is exactly what I said at the beginning. You know, I, I've sort of been focusing on, on just builds, builds, builds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not builds, like building stuff, building stuff. And then all of a sudden, I have to now use the army and i'm like oh this is like, this, this is so behind yeah. you're, you're doing it right though I'll, I'll say that right now i this is exactly how i also teach people when I, like 
in my like bronze GM content, I always teach people how to macro first and then micro later because it, it, it's the proper way to learn how to play efficiently. Uh, so you have the right idea. So just fixing up a couple of your timings and knowing how to be more aggressive properly is great. And then also on top of that, I would say um, understanding the stages of the game that you're in. And right now and up to this point, you've been in the Hellion Cyclone stage. But once you get... I would say like once you get to about 150 supply, 140, 150, somewhere in that range, you definitely kind of want to start maybe getting a transition ready to go. And I can see you're going mass factory. So it looks like you're probably going to be going into like, eventually you're going to go into like Thor's or something like that, or maybe like tanks, which would be fine. Uh, I have no problem with that. Um, but yeah, like just know that Hellion Cyclone, you should only ever stay on Hellion Cyclone and try to end the game on Hellion Cyclone and never transition if you're constantly guaranteeing that you're ahead of your opponent and you keep crippling yeah. them over and over. Yeah. If, if you're well, at this is, yeah, this is the, exactly what I've not been doing because like I said, this is, this is game. This is like literally the last game that I played, but until like three days ago, I didn't even know that you need to transition. Like I've been, <laughs> sure. I've been constantly staying in, in uh, cyclone until, it, until the end. And again, it totally could work if you keep crippling your opponent. So like what you just did there. Amazing. You just, you just uh, confirmed that this Protoss player might be on four bases. Uh, and what I mean by that is when, when you kill this base, he might have top middle. You confirm there's no other expansions for Protoss anywhere else. So you can be like, okay, well, there's a guaranteed three base for Protoss now. After this, you know, we'll just kill the Nexus first. So now there's a guaranteed three base for Protoss. There might be a fourth. And if you look at your bases, you have five. You have, you have a guaranteed four base and you now have a fifth up and coming. So this is a great position to be in. Plus, you also killed some of his army. That's uh, when he tried to defend this bottom right expansion uh, with stalkers that just died in the bottom right. This is a great position for you to be in. Um, I would say the next... Um, what's up? This is... Sorry, dude. I'm going to interrupt because sure. this is actually my main thing. I, I always, after every single game that I lose, I always go back to replay and I look at stuff, right? And every single game, I would say 95% of the games that I lose in this, in this league right now is... I always have more workers. I always have like better economy, more bases, and I still lose. Yeah. Like, I, uh, this happens to me all the time. Like I'm like, why do I lose? I feel like I'm always ahead and and, and workers and, and 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 whatnot. Yeah. And I still yeah. lose. This happens all way too often. And it's because Hellion Cyclone doesn't transition. Or sorry, Hellion Cyclone doesn't scale very well. Is the correct way to say that. Yeah. It, well, it's... yeah. Since like three days ago, I now know that you have to transition. This <laughs> yeah. Is like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Th this army, th this army is like the equivalent of like mass roaches for Zerg or something like that. It only works if you have massive supply leads. But if your opponent ever gets a foothold in the game and he starts making better tech than you and he starts matching your supply, this army drops off really hard. It only works if like you're like, oh, wow, I'm tearing and I'm a, like you are now. I have 180 supply and Protoss has 127. If you can maintain this and you can keep crippling Protoss over and over, you'll win. But if he ever gets to like 160 and he, let's say he has like disruptors or something, uh, you're going to be in a world of trouble. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, can we hop back like five seconds? Yeah, that's what I, I, I want to talk about. I, it. I, I yeah. think this is... This could be like one of those options when I say that I always have problems with locking. Yeah, on. I, I was. That's, no. I wanted to see that too because I want to tell you some uh, proper micro with uh, here. We'll, we'll get back to that point. Okay, so proper micro with Hellion Cyclone. Once you have a lot of Hellion Cyclone, again, you if you lose a Hellion, if you lose a Cyclone, it's okay. Hell, the hell, the purpose of the Hellions is literally to absorb damage, but the goal is really. To like the goal for Hellion Cyclone is really to now abuse the fact that Cyclone lock ons auto target everything for you. You don't have to micro that at all. It's just a move, and then suddenly 12 units get targeted. So, when your opponent does something like this right here, and you see them walking at you, the best way to micro this, the guar to guarantee you're going to get a fuckload of damage done, is I would say, is to you could even almost like move command at his army just for a second to get your units in position close to him or at the very least a move him. But if you get, if you see a lot of cyclone, uh, lock on start engaging, just scan exactly where his army is quickly. And the reason why this makes sense is because if you scan where his army is and a stalker blinks, 
the radius of a lock on gets increased when it when it lock ons and then also if you scan it it's impossible for a stalker to blink out of a lock on from a from a stock from a from a cyclone if right if he does it right when you cast a lock on if it's like already in range to be locked on is what I'm, is what i'm saying and then you can chase him at that at that point so it's and then if, if you scan once okay. and you kill like 10 stalkers that is totally worth it that's an amazing trade for you so like right now see how he's really committing all of his stalkers this would be perfect if you just kind of like. Yeah, I'm aim, uh, yeah, I think I'm aim moving in here. Yeah, if you if you move commanded to that, see that stalker that's like on the top half of stalkers, but it's the bot very bottom one. He's like shooting yeah. right now. Yeah, if you yeah. move commanded like right next to that stalker right now, <laughs> you would probably lose one cyclone and one hellion in the process of getting there because it would only take you like two seconds to get to that point, and then you could a move right there when a lot of your cyclones are in range of all of his stalkers and then you could also if he blinks back immediately you could also scan or if you got a juicy lock on and you were worried about him blinking back and then you were worried like oh i don't want to lose some of my lock ons you could scan anyways because at this point in the game now one scan getting a nice juicy lock on is more valuable than one mule it, so, hang on a second. if i lock on and if he blinks away and i have a scan i can still keep the lock on yes i do that like far enough to for me to still keep it yes so he, the, let me because in my mind i thought every time he blinks away that i lost it's only because you lose vision which is uh. where the scan comes in because here's the thing about uh the distance of a lock on and the distance of a blink a blink is roughly about i would say probably like five range or something like that it's it's not the farthest it's it's not short either but it's probably about like five range a cyclone's auto attack is six range or sorry, it's five range as well. And when you lock onto something, it basically doubles the radius. So if you, if you, my point is, is if you cast a lock on on a stalker and then it blinks back immediately, it will still be on the edge of the radius of still being shot by a lock on. And if you're still moving towards him as he's trying to run away, the move speed of a stalker and the move speed of a cyclone, the stalker actually runs slower. So the cyclone can cover ground again and keep on top of the mm -hmm. stalker. So if you know that this is what's going to happen and you expect this to happen, if like if you just know, all right, I just like the stock, the Protoss killed one or two Hellions or one or two Cyclones, and I have enough here to lock on to like 15 or 14 or whatever, and now you're like, well, I'm going to lose one or two. He'll lose 12 because he might kill one or two of mine. You can then charge him with confidence being like, I want to guarantee this is going to be a good lock on. So even though... I haven't killed anything yet. I'm going to chase him as if he's going to run away because I know I'm going to kill a fuckload. Like, I'm going to take a great trade here. That's cool. I did not know that because the, 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 the like, in the, looking at this image, to me, if I move command into this thing, the, the stalker that you said is shooting, to me, like, I'll lose five cyclones in my mind right now. Yeah. Just, just getting close to him before to get a lock on. Yeah. It would, it, it, he would only get two auto attacks off before you actually cast a lock on. And then. It would take the amount of time it would take his stalkers to auto attack down every cyclone would be 1.3 seconds per cyclone. And if you, if let's just say two died, okay, well, well, let's just say this guy is godlike micro and he only kills your cyclones. He doesn't kill any of your hellions. So moving in, he kills two, okay? So we'll delete two right now and you have 12 cyclones still when you start the lock on. He then has, he still has an attack speed of 1.3. So you would have to do 1.3 times 12. Which would be, yeah. that would be how long it would take for him to kill every cyclone. And again, he would only be able to kill two in the time it, your uh, your, your lock-ons would actually kill the stalker. Because we already talked about before how a, a lock-on can kill a stalker uh, before it attacks three times. Because it takes uh, 3.2 seconds to kill a stalker with a lock-on and it takes 3.9 seconds for three auto attacks to go off. And if we're assuming each auto attack a cyclone dies because he has enough stalkers to do that. What that means is, is if two die on the way, and then two more die as we cast a lock on, he won't get a mm -hmm. third attack off in that time. So we lose mm -hmm. four cyclones to cast this, and he loses ten stalkers when it finally happens. See, I had no idea. I did not know that because I, I don't really know. I just, my, my my cyclones need to grow a pair of balls, basically. Yeah, no, it's, they they have to be aggressive. That's the how how you have to play the style. Like you have to be constantly crippling your opponent. Or else it just kind of, it, like, or else you let them kind of ramp up supply, and then suddenly they get, and Cyclone Hillian just kind of falls off because it is outdated in terms of tech. Because as soon as this guy starts, like, seriously, as soon as he starts using, like, Tempests, Disruptors, stuff like that, like, more advanced units, you are going to be like, wow, Hillian Cyclone sucks. Like, this army needs to be something else now.
Like, you can still beat tech units as well as long as you maintain a massive lead. It's just when tech units also match your supply, now you're yeah. in a world of trouble. Yeah, then being a problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And also another thing too is uh, oh, so, like you see, I'm running away. I'm thinking that his zero, it's zero, zero versus line. one, one upgrades. You know what I mean, yeah, that's you're playing way too passive about this. <laughs> um, another thing too is that you may or may not know is Hellion Cyclone. You should what the way you should think about it is it really gains no benefit from weapon upgrades. I'm not saying you shouldn't do weapon upgrades because it's great for transitions, but a yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, it's only armor because yeah, I know it's. Well, the, average, yeah, and, the, and the, the lock on of a cyclone does the same damage no matter what your same, weapon upgrade yeah. is. Yeah. Like this army in my mind, like if I just attack them with this, I'll totally die. Yeah, the, the force fields are the scariest part for sure. Um, because he can actually do what he just did now, which is like zone out a lot of your cyclones and hellions <coughs> while trapping the others. Uh, now he also has Colossus too, which can do decent. The like Colossus aren't the best here, but they can definitely add some assisting damage. The scariest thing about Colossus is that they're so far away because of their siege range. Yeah. Uh, but <coughs> you'd still be better off like going for that lock on again, like diving in and just getting a nice lock on and trying to pop as many things as you can. That's just how Hellion Cyclone works. And then also the Hellbats here are not the right choice. You definitely want so to have can a we, Hellions. Yeah, I have a last question just to finish off this this <laughs> this uh, topic. Sure. Like my, how do I? Because I'm using this uh, auto whatever this thing is when you hold the button and just does it many clicks for you many times. You know, if you're attacking the building with the cyclones, you just press this button and it just goes all the, like all of like, them. Right, yeah, rapid um, fire. Rapid fire. Yeah. So how would I? If I want to come in and just uh, do rapid fire into like those. Uh, Colossus, for example, what's the like? How do I physically? Because I don't know, should I rapid so, fire for like one second, one, then yeah, second, I, know, second. I know what you're saying. Um, the, what's the best way to physically? Lock I, I, on I, I would you? say, in general, you don't really ever want to lock on to like this kind of army. I would say locking on is still not the right call, just letting your uh -huh. letting your like just spread its uh, the lock ons out would be the better way to do this because this like army if that would be blue block blue lords or yeah. anything like that i would still there's no need for me to do that yeah. right yeah like this it's very few situations oh, where you it, but the, it, let's let's just say though hypothetically I, I still want to give you the right answer here so most situations you just want to you would just want to let it auto lock on but let's now say let's just say you have 10 cyclones okay and he only has four stalkers and two colossus so if you auto lock on, you're gonna have you're only gonna have like sixty percent of your cyclones doing something. The other four aren't gonna auto lock on anything, and they're just gonna be like, "Well, we're chilling." Exactly. the The way you do it is you would just a move first, let your lock on spread, and then if you have excess, you can hold your rapid fire key and just mouse over what you want to lock onto, and that's it. But oh, a, so a move just, first. Oh, okay. So you get your spread first, and then stack whatever needs to be stacked on. And now, like, can I hold? Can I hold it and literally just like if like so? It said these three colossi. Instead of like making sure I selected one, can I just hold it down and just like wiggle the mouse kind of like yes. in the area? So like okay. just just to make sure you have the right hockey setup. What what do you, what key do you actually use for rapid fire? E. E, e. Okay, E is fine. Um, because E is the the what do you call these things that fly from sure. the sky for and the workers. Now, what is your hotkey for lock on on your cyclones? You. Uh. Oh, that's what I, that's what I meant. Yeah, you, all you gotta do to make it work properly. Oh, no, lock on it, it says it's C. You you no, it's, no, it's, it's a, everything's on E. Sorry, man, everything is on E. Okay, just like you can have multiple hockeys as well, but just just as long as if you want to cast rapid fire, you just need to have a uh, the same hockey of what rapid fire is bound to a secondary or the main hockey of the thing you're trying to rapid fire. That's all it is. Yeah. Uh. And now the last thing, okay, about uh, cyclone lock-ons, if you want to stack lock-ons. This is the last situation that may or may not happen at some point in time. If you ever want to stack lock-ons and you, like, let's let's just say, for instance, you are you want to kill uh, a command center or a nexus and you're all in the middle of running away from his army and you're like, I don't want to fight that right now, but I do want to kill his economy. Move command to your army. You have your army on move command and as it's move commanding, rapid fire mouse over whatever you're going to do and you don't have to if you're going to rapid fire one thing you do not have to move your mouse either you can just move it on top of it and it can be idle on top of it and you can spam yeah. like that too just yeah. holding the key down and then while you're yeah, move commanding then you this can this is perfect for sniping like nexus exactly stuff, like, yeah it totally command, 
stack run away goes down so fast yeah and then um yeah from there you just um you know you just mount you mouse over what you're going to do hold rapid fire while you're move commanding and then none of your cyclones uh will stack something else they will all stack the same target because they're currently in move command and then there you go and then you remove command them once you cast the rapid fire and that's that's the old that's literally the only three ways you can micro cyclones yeah so j just but still like for example looking at this right if i want to stack on those three colossus i have to select then i have to shift move you don't have you do not shift move anything you would what you would do is you would move command into his army and then you would while you're move commanding into his army you would rapid fire his colossus you would not but shift then they anything. Will not, they will not. They will not until they stop moving. Right? They will not. Uh... What will happen if you do that is your cyclones will be told move towards his army, and then they'll be giving another command now while they're moving, which is the second you're in range to cast the lock on on those colossus, do it. Ah, uh, I see. So I don't have to do the shift. Okay. Okay. Yeah, shift is not relevant here. Um, oh, okay, cool. And then just keep in mind, though, again, I, I would against his army, I really want to stress this point. You definitely would not want to be focus firing the Colossus. You would just want to be killing his army. Because if you focus fire the Colossus, you're going to dive too deep into too many things, and you're going to lose way too uh -huh, much. Uh -huh. What you really want to be doing is just thinning him out with uh, a spread of lock-ons. Okay, and now I, I like that you're going into something else. You're going into Thor's now. It's cool. Well, uh, kind of. You're still making a lot of Cyclones. And when, whenever you make the transition, once that happens, honestly, stop making Cyclones altogether. I feel like I kind of I want to like attack and lose a little bit of supply that to free up for the for the Thor's and then. I, I totally don't mind losing, like, trading out some of your supply to go into better units. I just don't want you to, um, once you start making Thors and start transitioning into a better comp, I don't want you to keep making a bunch of Cyclones with them. Because you're sticking yourself on the weak composition for too long then. Yeah, he's already back. We're already back. And now, yeah, like, now this dude has max supply and he's got seven Colossus. Uh, a great. If I were to ask you really quick, what unit? There's two units. That, uh, there's two correct answers here. What is two units you think that would be a great uh, thing to go for against his composition of mostly stalker and, and uh, stalker, sentry, and colossus? I have no idea, but I would guess maybe a tank or a Thor. Okay, so tank is correct. Thor could work, but Thor is not honestly probably the best here. I would say it's either tank or liberator. But the thing is with with tanks, I feel like if I'm using cyclones with tanks, if if I siege the tanks, then I cannot kite anymore. Like they will be sure. just on the way. I cannot run away as easy. Right? Exactly. So that's why you can use your Hellion cyclone as long as you can, and as you lose them, you don't rebuild them. Oh, so what I what will I have with tanks? Nothing. The tank. The, the, you. I'm not saying you don't keep making hellbats and stuff like that, but you could actually go. Your army. Your army could go from just mass Hellion cyclone into now Hellbat, Tank, and like maybe some Thors to assist it, just in case you get some air. Like, we're talking like 12 or 15 tanks, like mm -hmm. 20 Hellbats, and maybe like 5 Thors. That would be an amazing composition at... And then kiting is over. Because the thing about the, Hell the Cyclones, again, is if your opponent gets high supply, Cyclones become garbage. You don't want to have them anymore. They're, they're actually just weak at this point now. Because you're, gonna, you're no longer able to punish him at any point in the game now, what's going to happen now is you're going to be the one getting punished because Cyclones are so glass cannon and they also have to get in kind of close to abuse that. So now you're going to be going in close to like a bunch of AOE affecting things like a bunch of Colossus. And you're going to be like, wow, I got a, lot, a bunch of lock-ons, but they all died at the time they initiated a lock-on. So transitioning out of Hellion Cyclones is totally fine. Yeah, I guess this is like my main thought. Yeah, this is super helpful, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, his army is super scary for yours right now. Like, just look. Oh, here. What's this is the thing. This is actually this is funny because I was running away and I always think that his army is better than mine. Let me try to just auto attack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's really just because he's got tech units now, and like I said before, he's now matched your supply, and your cyclones are never they're never really gonna gain the benefit. Of lock ons because they're never going to finish I just a lock on. Thought that my, I looked at his upgrades and I'm like, okay, I'm ahead of that. Yeah. 
Oh, I didn't lose? No, he's, he's definitely winning the fight against you. And the reason why, the reason why is because you took a massive resource loss in that fight. He only lost his stalkers, which are very replaceable. He didn't lose any of his Colossus. He didn't lose any of like, the power units he has. Yeah, he didn't lose, yeah. So, I also didn't have my uh, Thors into this mode, whatever you call that. Oh, that doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, uh, the thing about Thors is against his entire mirror right there, it's all ground. Uh -huh. So high impact payload is only for air. So that didn't matter at all. Because Thors do oh, anti-ground so shots versus I'll... Colossus. No, no, no. I'm oh. I thought this is high impact is when you always want to have. No, you, you do want to have high impact payload. But high impact payload is an anti air attack only. Its ground oh, attack, its its ground attack is always the same ground attack. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's it has because the Thor has three attacks. It has always the same ground attack. It has. So high, when he attacks, when they attack the the those Colossus the laser, the Colossus, do they attack them with uh, the gra ground anti ground? Or? Yeah, it's because it's a ground unit. Like Colossus oh. can still be hit by anti air units that have air to air, yeah. like a Viking or a yeah. Corruptor. Yeah. But it yeah. is actually still a ground unit, so Thors don't oh, use yeah, their so air it, shot. It didn't matter. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in here, I don't like. I mean, this is it's pretty straightforward. I think the rest of the game sure. is just gonna be the same on and on. And then now I do like the fact that like you're at least choosing a more strong army. Uh, like I love that you're not still making cyclones. So even though I don't think Thors are the best here, they'll do a lot better than fucking cyclones would. And it's just because Cyclones are seriously paper. They die so fast. So as soon as you get abused by like someone who has solid composition with AoE, Cyclones just fall off. That's that's why they fall off so hard. Um... Am I crazy? Jesus, that range is crazy. No, you actually, you know what? You actually are hitting his his Colossus with your anti-air attack. The fuck? Dude, let me know if you have any questions about StarCraft. Okay, I'll let you know. <laughs> Hundred percent. I was. I honestly did not expect that. I'm not even kidding. But is there is there a difference in? Oh, there's the a total difference. Uh, high impact payload is uh, more like, stronger. Like if you if you were to compare. How fast a Colossus would die to explosive? No, payload? but I think I, I don't think if if you not if you're not putting them in high payload, I think they'll still they will not shoot them with those little missiles that. They yeah, no, I don't you. think they will either. Which is why I did not think they hit they would hit Colossus that way. Like I'm confused as to why the fuck high impact payloads are hitting the Colossus, <laughs> but they are. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, I, so I'm, to summarize this game, I understand. I just. Tanks instead. The only question I have, I think later on he's transitioning really heavily into, into Immortals. And my question is, because Immortals just rack mac. If yeah. He just goes Immortals. Now, like, what would be like a like a tank? I guess also counter for them, right? Uh, so, and you're actually winning this fight, by the way. Uh, Thor, Thor's do all right. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I did not think that high impact hit that shit. So you can actually Thor's were actually a great call. Um, but just solid macro of like Hellion. Or a Hellbat Thor would be fine. Again, Liberator. Get used to using Liberator if you don't already. Because um, Liberator will become your best friend at some point when you go against Protoss. And Liberators, you don't even have to have a lot of them. We're talking about like you have like six or eight mm -hmm. and then you're done. Mm -hmm. And you just siege forward and you get like Liberator range so that you can siege from far away. And your pushes can be designed in a way where you leapfrog Liberation Fields forward and then you cover your Liberators. So you yeah. just stand in the fields. Uh, and then you, if he goes immortals, you'll just be like, okay, well, all your shit's dying super hard because liberators are freaking insane. Uh, but yeah, it, like hellbats would be great again. Like hellbat Thor beats immortal because immortals shoot hellbat, which they don't get the bonus damage from. Oh, I think I do, dude. Look at that. I'm looking at my base. I just built four starports for them, maybe. Oh, dude, well, that's perfect. Also, here's here's a final tip, okay, of uh, composition. So hellbat, hellbat Thor, hellbat tank, all these things are great. Uh, liberators as well. But a final, a death ball composition you can make against Protoss. Death ball. Which is like, yeah. it makes it hard for, like, Protoss is just like, what the fuck do I do here? Uh -huh. If you actually go into, if you can afford to transition to this, if you go mass battle cruiser with drilling claw widow mines is ridiculous. Yeah, dude, I like, I always feel so crazy start for gas that I can, I'm like, there's no sure, way I sure. can afford. 
like you said, like you said, I've been doing so many cyclones, and I feel like I just remaking them, remaking them as I'm attacking. And I just feel like because I'm attacking and making them as they die, I feel like I can just eventually break. But think about this too, though. If your opponent is controlled better in fu- in the future because you're more uh, proactive with your cyclones and you're doing it more correctly, your opponent's not going to be as intimidating as he already is now because you are missing a lot of windows to do damage to those things. Yeah. And then now suddenly you're not losing nearly as many cyclones and you have a lot more gas to work with. So, like, that could also be a thing. I'm not saying you have to go BCs, but it is an option. But just know that if you wanted to go BCs at the end of the game, what you need to do is you actually need to prioritize uh, on your armories, uh, armor upgrades and ship weapons, not ground weapons. If you want to go into, like, Thor-based things, you need to go, you can go ground weapons, it's fine. So, like, yeah. ship weapons also is fine, too, if you want to go for uh, Liberators as support. If you want to do Liberator style, ship weapons is also good there, too. Cool, man. Yeah, like your Thor is actually one, dude. Thor is pretty good. Thor is literally the best aim moving unit in the entire game. <laughs> They're fucking strong. Yeah, it's just so... Like, the reason... So, this is the thing. I just recently started playing, like, I would always play bot versus every... Sure. Pretty good with how that it works. I know good, like, spread and all that. I'm so used to, like, micro-ing it. But that, the reason why I want to... I do Cyclone versus... Uh, uh, Protoss and Zerg is because it's it's like the mobility is so fun. It's so easy to like, oh, I'm getting attacked while I'm attacking. It's so easy to go back to the whole map and, and defend and attack. It's so mobile. And when I get these Thors, it's like, god damn, I feel, especially versus Zerg, so scary. No, I'm is, attacking uh... while, while he's attacking me from the other side and there's no way I can uh, come back. Yeah, no, it's... To defend or... Yeah. It, it's, I have no idea how to micro. I just aim these things i have it's, no it's idea it's kind of how thor's work honestly thor you really can't micro thor's very much is like, like micro of thor's stepping even exists for these things the, like, the yeah. only the only time it really does is against uh like brood lords for instance if you're trying to like like let's say you have hellbats roast a bunch of roast a bunch of broodlings and you want to take a moment to walk your thor's forward to get closer distance to brood lords so that they don't kite you as much. Yeah. And then yeah, you and yeah. then you pop like four brood lords at once instead of being shoved away by broodlings. That's like the only time you actually micro this unit. Doesn't look like Zerg does a lot of brood lords stuff to this last pack. Oh, exactly, exactly. Because on aim, just and the reason why now that that that, that it is is because Thor's uh, the high impact payload got a range upgrade as well, which means they outrange brood lords now. So kiting is yeah, like by one, I think. Yeah, it's one. So brood lords just get outranged now, and they just get popped in the air constantly. I can't believe High Impact Payload hits Colossus. What the fuck? When did this happen? That's cr- nuts. Is it, I, oh, I, I guess I, I, I build the Vikings instead of the, oh, whatever. I, I, at this point, like like I said, I, yeah, no, I it's, felt like I got it's, 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 Yeah, it's definitely game. over. Uh, but, uh, so listen, I mean, uh, this game, uh, I understand just missing up on some gas, more uh, pay attention to the gas, and uh, trying to get the windows with, the, with attacking. Yep. Um, you just gotta really appreciate the fact that when there's low counts of units, cyclones pop enemy units very fast. The, like the less stalkers there are, if he doesn't even have enough stalkers to one shot a cyclone, that's amazing for you. Which is we're talking like three stalkers versus two cyclones. That's amazing for you because it's very, very, very high chance you can keep taking amazing trades. Like we're talking two cyclones could kill like five stalkers. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't fight all five at once, you fight three, one, and then two. And then suddenly the Protoss is like, oh my god, like this is way harder to deal with than it should be right now. Because these Cyclones keep just popping my shit so fast. And that sets the pace for like the, the follow-up, which is like now that he has Blink, suddenly he doesn't have ten stalkers running around, he only has like six or something. He has a little bit less, and then now when you have Hellion Cyclone, just getting a nice hit and he's fucked. Yeah. So, no, man, this is exciting. I'm excited to try this. Yeah, man. Do you have any final questions about anything before we wrap it up? Uh, no. I mean, well, actually, yeah. Well, no. Okay. It would be nice. It's, for, it's not my notification. It's his, by the way. It would way. be nice to, if, I don't know if you, if you, if it's like enough for you to look at the game and say, instead of like for me, kind of like one thing to, 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 I, to kind of like. I can give you key points. Key points are the things you already said, which is your gas, 100%. Your, because uh, that'll make your your power of your cyclones go up because you will be able to make more factories faster, 
which will make Hellions faster, which will retain your Cyclones more. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is um, uh, the, you know, the being proactive with your Cyclones early, like we talked about as well. That's a big one. We don't have to really go into it because we talked about it. The next, yeah. the final one is don't stay on Cyclones forever. Once you get to maxed out, literally, and you start making, then once you started making all these extra factories, that's when you should probably transition because you're like, I'm at like 160 supply, 170 supply. Keep using the Cyclones at that point to do whatever you can, but don't keep making them for like the next seven minutes or something. Because it's all that's going to happen is, is you're going to put yourself in these situations like you did in top left where you're like, let's go. Oh, God, that was a lot of Colossus and that just sucked. So get out, get out of mass Cyclones if you're not able to just win the game off of them uh before it's too late yeah like i said it just it feels like if if it, when i'm maxed out I think that's the time when you sort of start like you know maybe map you kind of like spread out on the map and if i do thors i feel like there's how do i defend all of this sensor towers and uh, and thor is like if you have sensor towers and you're if you're constantly attacking with hellion cyclone you're keeping him busy anyways and then by the time you actually finally lose all your hellion cyclone you should already have a brand new full thor army it's not like you're starting from yeah, zero but what if he's zerg Planetaries, like planetaries. Oh, planetaries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Plan cool, and building armor. Make sure also, you you are you did get it this game, but make just make sure you always also get building armor and range, and you're gonna be in a great spot. <laughs> His Discord's yeah. blowing up, guys. Uh, cool. All right, thanks, man. Um, I wish yeah, yeah. Cool. wish thanks, you the best uh, of luck. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, man. All right, it's exciting. And also, I'll I'll message you on Discord again uh, for the vod of this coaching lesson. And uh, you can yeah. watch it again whenever you want. So I'll, I'll expect it probably oh, like. Nice. I, I, I've wrote, I've wrote, I've been writing things down, but yeah. Yeah. So if, if you want to watch it again, you can, and expect it to be uploaded probably like within 24 hours. Cool. All right. Sounds La good, man. Later, man. Have a good night. All right. Cheers. Bye. See ya. <laughs> yeah, that was his Discord, guys. <laughs> That's not mine. People in chat are like, mute your damn Discord. It's, it's his. He has speakers. Uh, people are blowing him up. But guys, thank you for what, very much for watching the coaching lesson. I appreciate it. Uh, it's really hard to mix in coaching lessons right now because we're just so busy with Bronze GM. But we just, I was able to mix one in there right there. Uh, we have, I have like a lot of people asking me about that right now. But thank you for watching it. If you guys enjoyed this coaching lesson, I have uh, plenty more as well uh, on my YouTube channel. So check them out as well if you, if, if you liked it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.